I'm Ingrid Sullivan. A lot of you know me from the seminars that we've done before, and I have... I'm John Sullivan, and uh, in case you haven't figured it out, uh, we're a couple. <laughs> oh, I wanted to say something. I'd like everybody to look at somebody sitting next to you and say, I'm going to learn something today. Now look back at the other person and say, it's about time. <laughs> and we also want to make sure, and she's disappeared, she might be at the sign-in table. Uh, Debbie Ford, usually she's sitting at the back table here as we're recording things. But here's our Debbie Ford. Hi, Chandra. Debbie is the operations manager on our team. Debbie is the person that works to put all of these things together for you. She does a lot of the research that we do for the seminars, and she's actually going to participate with us today on a couple of different topics. So uh, we're really grateful to have Debbie here. Then just to make sure that we explain who we are, because we do have some new people here today. John and I are Sullivan and Sullivan Real Estate. We've been in the real estate business for many years. We serve all kinds of clients, first-time home buyers, people that are moving from their first home to their second home. Our largest group of clientele is 55 and older. When we started really focusing on 55 and older, we built senior downsizing experts which is comprised of partners that work really closely with us. We have repair contractors. A lot of times we just, we're working on something right now with a client where there's a, a couple of places in his garage, you know when your garage door goes up, how it vibrates? And sometimes there's areas in the ceiling where the taping and the bedding on the drywall comes apart. Well, the seller said, I want to get that fixed before we do something. So we have a contractor over there and doing some painting as well. We also have, which we had some of them here with us last night, and last night, last month, estate liquidation professionals for all kinds of estate sales, whether it be in your home, online, buyout, etc. Then we have packers and movers that work with us. They work all over the Metroplex. And we also are really blessed that we have individuals that specialize in the financial and legal that help our clients when they need to look at where's a good place for me to move my money. Example, we just closed on the property last week. Our couples uh, received a sizable amount on the property that they sold and they said, we want to put our money somewhere that it's going to grow for us. Where do we do that? So we have people we can refer to. Uh, in addition to that, our legal, uh, several of you may have contacted the Davidsons. They've been partners with us in the past. They're really great to look at your power of attorneys, uh, your trust, those kinds of things that need to be updated on occasion. And that makes up senior downsizing experts. So this group started this company. And then we really love sharing information with you, educational information. So we've been doing this now. This is our sixth or seventh smart senior. Right, so we've been doing this since 2018, and we just get together with our partners and we game plan on the different things that we feel would be things that you need to know and try to provide the people that you need to know it from in the seminars as well. That being said, we have several educational partners which are also uh, working with us to present these programs to you. They're sponsors of the Smart Senior Series. And we have some of those people that are here today. And if you are here today, I'd like you to come up front and take a minute and introduce yourself to our audience. So I think you would be one or Brad. Good afternoon. My name is Bertha Hurls, and I hold a license with the state of Texas. And I plan funerals, cremation, and cemetery property with Dignity Memorial. So I want to be your advocate. So any questions you may have about pre-planning your funeral or your cremation, I would love to work with you on that. We have 33 locations in the DFW area. You may have heard of Shannon Russo, Moore Davis, 
uh, Blue Bonnet Hills, J.E. Files, Sparkling Hillcrest. So we have an array of funeral homes and cemeteries. So please call me, you can reach out to me. My phone number is all across the Smart Seniors. So please call me and I'd love to answer your questions. Thank you. Bertha, you have such a nice voice, <laughs> calling voice. I wish my voice was like that. You make me think that you're uh, like a radio speaker. So you're a beautiful voice. Hi, everybody. My name is Levi Malone, and I am with Civitas Senior Living. Civitas is based out of Fort Worth, locally owned and operated, and we have 17 fully functioning opening senior living communities currently with several more. I don't know why I'm screaming because it's making it do that. Several more on the way. Um, so uh, the big thing for Civitas is we want to provide you with senior living to where you've always lived or where your children live. Um, and so our buildings are built specifically to the areas that they're in. Um, we have some buildings that have independent living um, and some buildings that have assisted living in them right here. So we'd love to help you with, if you're looking or you know somebody who's looking for a senior living option. I don't think it's you, my ears break. Hey guys, I'm Zoe again from Celebration Magazine. Just so you know a little bit about more who we are. We are a free publication for people celebrating life after 60. We also do senior group travel, um, lots of free events. Um, our offices are on the other side. However, we do a lot of Zoom events um, that you can join from anywhere for prizes to learn amazing stuff from amazing people like this. Um, and our subscription is free, so uh, give us a call. Information's in the magazine on how you too can have a subscription for the best magazine around. What? Um, so you can find it in grocery stores and doctor's offices. Um, we do Whole Foods, Market Street, Tom Thumb. Online at www.celebrationmagazine.com, and you'll also find all the information about our cool events. And we got some of our people here with us today that have said hi. So, hi, uh, it's a good to see you in person. Love you guys. Yeah, we really appreciate all of our sponsors because we couldn't do this without them. I just want to say something about Bertha. She's been a sponsor of ours since we started these. Uh, she also helped. Ingrid and I with our pre planning, and if you haven't done it, it's a gift you can give to your family. And actually, it's not more, but it's kind of fun when more Bertha does it. So um, <laughs> reach out to her, and she can help you out with that. Okay, so uh, just kind of moving along here, a couple of things. Um, we have Haver Wealth Management, they are partners with us, uh, do financial planning. We have the watermark at Broadway City View, that is a uh, continuing care retirement community. They have villas, they have independent living, assisted living, and uh, still nursing. Uh, they've got information out there on the table. We have Cherry Creek Mortgage. They've helped us out quite a bit uh, this year with people that were looking at doing something a little different, whether it be a refi to take advantage of the low interest rates, or maybe to even purchase something newer that was actually uh, easier to manage. Uh, Album Keller Ranch is a 55 plus active adult community there in Keller. Uh, they have sister communities that are called uh, Overture uh, also that are out there. Uh, Counterwell Joint State Sales, we talked about that earlier. Old Republic Title, that's a title company that works really closely with us when it comes to property information that you need, surveys, uh, deeds, mineral information, that kind of thing. And then last but not least, but I want to make a special um, thank you to the Viridian Elements, which is where we are today. We're on the Viridian property. It is a planned community that actually has a little bit for everybody. They've got first time home buyer homes here. They've got beautiful large mansions out here. And then also the Elements itself is a uh, planned 65 and older, actually 62 and older housing, new home development on the backside. We did a tour there a few months ago. So if you're new to the Viridian, I would encourage you to go and see what that's all about. They've just been wonderful partners for us to provide us with this beautiful venue to have our events. So thank you to all of our sponsors. 
So as we usually say, you know, we're going to be talking about some things that are going to you'll have interest in, I wonder about. We're going to ask you to hold your questions. We always have time for Q&A at the end uh, and write those things down. If you brought a cell phone with you and you're not a presenter, I'm going to be using mine today to show you something. If you're not a presenter, please silence your phones so that we don't have uh, that extra, especially since we're recording today. We appreciate that. And then there is a survey inside of your handout. Uh, we've changed it up a little bit. We really want to hear from you. We're in the process of planning our next year's events. So tell us, what else would you like to see? What other kind of programs can we provide you with education wise? A lot of them don't understand where the address bar is, like to type in the websites. They haven't clicked yeah, the they box. They start <laughs> typing and like it's scrolling all over the place because they haven't clicked the box. <laughs> oh, no, 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 you don't. When they right click, it makes a menu and then it's blocking something they want. I have to make sure they click in blank space so they don't click a link so then it takes them somewhere else. Stay still there, okay? Double click. No? Oh. <laughs> they don't really understand what a website is versus what an email is. Sorry, you typed in email.com? I typed in www.email.com. Yeah, that's the problem. I sort of have to uh, guide them where to click. Bit to the left, bit to the right. No, you went gone too far. Down, down. Click and then drag it down. Click. Yes, no, click and drag it down. Click and drag. No, click and then drag it down. And then I click and drag it down. So it's kind of like walking a tightrope <laughs> for them all the time. Oh boy, oh boy. Um, oh. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> but for now, let's go ahead and have a conversation about what is technology. So as we're looking at our screen here, what we're seeing here is that the technology is a science of knowledge put into practical use to solve problems or invent useful tools. So we've actually had technology a part of our lives for a long time. I think of it this way, starting up the stove to bake a cake. There's something there on the timer, technology-wise, that's actually helping us to do that. Uh, most often thought of today as it applies to devices, different devices that we have, that we wear, and software applications that we use. So John, I'm going to turn the next two slides over to you and I want you to help us understand these graphics. How many of you uh, use or go to the internet? Well, we match up with some of the surveys. Is anybody ever frustrated with technology? You can see we uh, demonstrated frustration with technology this morning, but this Graph represents internet usage by adults between 50 and 64. In 2000, about 46% of that demographic were using the internet. To now, 96% of people uh, between 50 and 64 use it. And then for people over 65, 75% are using the internet. And the majority of us get on the internet using high speed, it says broadband, but that's just high speed internet or the easy spectrum and t and or whoever the provider is. Okay, how many of you use social media? Not that many, interesting. Okay, social media used by adults 50 to 64, it was 4% in 2000, and today it's 73%. And uh, of the group 65 and older, it rose from 3% to 45% currently. And the biggest sites that they use for social media are YouTube. Anybody heard of YouTube? Yeah. And Facebook. Probably everybody's heard of Facebook. So who has a smartphone? Yeah, just most people do. So you know what a smartphone is. It gives you access to the internet and, and you match up with the demographics. 
85% of all Americans use a smartphone today, compared to 35% in 2011. 83% of those people are between 50 and 64, and 61% of people over 65 use smartphones. So that's our intro to getting into technology. Tech ownership. So as we talk about, you know, 77% of the people own a smartphone. How many of you own a tablet? Yeah, you know, that's, well, that's about 47%. And then wearable devices. We call, I call mine a smartwatch. It's a wearable device. Do any of you have a smartwatch? Yeah, just a couple of you. So that's pretty much what the demographics show us. So as we look at the graphic on the right side over here, it says 51% of 50 plus have purchased tech in the past year. Uh, I know someone that's attending with us today that just bought a wonderful smart TV. And then there's other things, new computers, bigger screens. How about down here in the bottom, uh, bottom right, Alexa, hey Alexa. Uh, that's another smart device that we're working with. But what we're seeing here is 23% of individuals that are 50 and older are using smartphones for a lot of different ways. There's a lot of different phones out there for uh, older adults, but we're seeing more and more people that are actually using tablets. So it could be a Kindle, it could be a uh, iPad. I see a lot of times when we're visiting our clients, they're using their iPad because they're reading a book there or they're using, I have one client that has just recently had a stroke and so she's not able to really work with one of her hands on her device any longer. So she's actually using her tablet to communicate with her loved ones. They call her on her tablet. Um, there are individuals that are going into retirement communities that are taking notes, maybe in-home healthcare, that are taking notes about you and they can upload that information to their files. So the tablet has been a really popular tool. Uh, beyond that, we're gonna move into the different sections today that we've got planned for you. So we're gonna talk about smart tools that in, uh, impact health and wellness. We're gonna talk about safety and security tools, assistive, assistive technology tools. That, was a, that word is a little bit of a tongue twister, Debbie. Uh, social interaction, and then we're also going to end today with lifelong learning. So that just kind of gives you an intro to what our program is going to be about. Yeah, as we go through this, we're going to show you different types of technology that uh, people use to help them uh, as they age or just for entertainment. But we just want to make a point. You'll see some name brands up there, but we're not really endorsing any specific name brand. They just happen to be who we picked out to put on a slide to talk about a specific technology. So first we're going to talk about health and wellness. And in that section, we're going to look at medication dispensers. So that's really come a long way. I know that I remember when uh, John used to uh, go to visit his mom once a week and he'd sit down with her and they'd sort all the medication and put it in a different pockets of her pill minder so that she'd take the right ones at the right time. We would do that kind of long distance for my mom who was in um, New Mexico. But since then, we've got some great tools. Some of these medical dispensers will store your medication anywhere from 28 to 90 days, which is nice. It'll dispense the medication for you at the appropriate time. You can program it to make a specific sound, or some have already got those program, programmed in to remind you. Um, send you reminders to your smart devices. Some have facial recognition, so they know the right person's there taking that medication uh, with voice reminders as well. But keeping in mind, they all have an exp expense attached to them. But it's easier to be able to take the right things versus guess. And I've noticed that a lot of the medications today may even be the same colors. And you're not sure if that's going to be the water pill or if that's going to be the heart pill. And you're supposed to take two water pills, but you just took two heart pills. So it's kind of nice to have something like that. So we see things here on the um, slide today, like the um, Hero, 
up in the top right hand corner that you can load all of your medication in there and it will dispense that out to you. Then we have the Priya. I think it's adorable. I have a little demonstration on that one for you. Uh, we have the Med Binder. Looks kind of like a, a safety safety deposit box to me. And then you've got the Med Binder down here at the bottom. All of them will dispense medication for you. Here is the medication I have for you to take. Your dose has been dispensed. Be sure to take your pill. screen on there with the cute eyes on it, but I believe in the demonstration that Debbie and I saw when we were looking it up, that it's also something that you would use similar to a monitor, and you could communicate with a family member using that as well. Any of you heard of those or using anything like that? Okay. All right. Well, let's move on to the next thing. We're going to talk about hearables. So, by a guess, those are devices to amplify or make uh, sound easier for you to comprehend or hear. And everybody's heard of a hearing aid. Um, there are devices that are approved by the FDA, and they, some of them you can get synced with your smartphone. So if you get a call, you don't have to try to you know, switch to the smartphone or whatever. You can just take the call through the hearing aid or hearing device. And um, so that's basically what they're for, is just to amplify the sound and help you. Some of them can be tweaked by the audiologist to uh, cut down on ambient noise, and so they'll improve not only the sound, but the uh, quality of the sound as you hear it. The other thing that we see on there is earbuds. How many of you have earbuds? Oh, come on. Surely you have some earbuds. Okay. The ones that I have are the Apple earbuds, and I really love these. So uh, since I'm still working, it's really convenient for me to be able to take these, and I use this during the day so that I can communicate through my cell phone without having to hang on to it, which is really nice. Uh, I use the earbuds when I'm out walking in the morning. I love, I'm a podcast junkie, so I love being out there with my dog, hearing my latest podcast through those earbuds. They even have earbuds now that you can swim with. So you can have them in, and while you're doing your exercise routine, whether it be lap swimming or uh, water aerobics, you can, you can have your uh, earbuds. And the Apple earbuds is one. They've got uh, Google Pixel Buds and Galaxy Buds. And the other place that I really like them is there's times I have tinnitus in my left ear. So I have constant noise all the time, ringing, ringing, ringing. Sometimes it's the pitch of a fax machine. I've had this for about 25 years, so I'm used to that noise over here. But having an earbud in there when I'm listening to something or I'm on Zoom, it just makes it so much easier for me to hear because I've got that fine sound in there versus the mess that's going on over here. John and I kind of joke, John has um, his good ear is his left ear. My good ear is my right ear. So when we want to be together, we put our good ears together so we can hear each other. But when we're with company, we give the company our good ear. <laughs> now, because my ear is the right ear, I think I'm the best driver. So I'm usually the one driving because I can't talk to him that well when he's the driver. That's actually a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk about something else besides our hearing. All right, we go from hearables to wearables. That's a wearable technology on my arm right there. 
most of the time I look at it to say it's 2.31 on uh, September 9th is what I'm looking for, but this does much more. When I went to my water aerobics class, I switched it to workout and it tracked my workout. I think if I wanted to look at my heart rate while I did it, I could see that. Uh, when I finished the workout, it told me how much time I was in cardio and how much I was in this zone and that zone. So it helps. Also, it tracks my steps. So my personal goal is 7,000 steps at least a day. So I can look at it and see where I'm at. Most of the time I hit it. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I go over. But on the week, if I get 49, 50,000 steps, I know I've done my job as far as trying to stay healthy. Uh, they also have GPS in them, and so that could be used for location services as well. Sleep tracker, mine does that. It tells me how many hours I was asleep and in the REM zone or deep sleep or light sleep and things. So it, they're health devices as well as just telling time, right? Here's another thing that I really like. Now, if you live with somebody and you've lost track of your cell phone, Usually it's pretty easy to say, can you just call me? I can't find my phone, right? So I'm going to go to my smartphone here. And tell it, find my phone. It doesn't matter if my phone is on sound or silent. It's going to set off that alarm until I can get somewhere where I can find my phone that's trying to say, here I am, here I am. And I can track it on my watch. Isn't that great? All right, moving right along then. So now we're going to move to, what do we have here? We're, we have the wearables, still more on wearables. And I think these are some things that, um, we want to make sure that everybody's aware of. You know, there are the uh, monitor health condition, high blood pressure wearables, uh, great for diabetes. They have wearables. They've got the Dexcom. Um, our son is type 1 diabetic, and we have been after him to get the Dexcom. He can wear that because it's going to help him keep track of his blood sugars and know when he needs to help himself with uh, with some insulin or not. That's a really great tool. Um, then we have some others that are out here. You notice that they both show phones. So they both will share information with your phone, like the one on the bottom, fall detection devices. Typically, you'll see that there are, especially if you, li if you live in a retirement community or you have somebody living there, you'll be given a fall detection device. So that when you do have a fall, you can at least let somebody know, kind of like what I just did with my phone, help me, I've fallen, I can't get up. But now they make them to where they even look like jewelry, like a, a, a beautiful necklace with a pendant on it. And that pendant may also be synchronizing with your phone. So that if you do fall and someone is also has that same access to on their phone, they can see where you are. Uh, I meant to get something out. Hold this, John. On my key ring, I have a device that's called Ripple, Ripple Safety. And when you look at it, it's a little square and it looks like a fingerprint on it. But what's interesting about that is that if I'm somewhere where I might be in trouble, I have a flat tire, for example, I can press that device one time and I have the safety crew calling me, asking me, are you okay? Do you need help? Being a real estate agent, sometimes you worry about who am I meeting at a house? I can take that safety device, I can clip it onto my bra strap, and if I have somebody coming through an open house that I really feel like, oh, I'm not very comfortable about this person being here. I can, most of us here have seen somebody do this, right? especially for Mary, and as women, we know what that is. All I have to do 
is clip that to my brassiere strap and I can press it twice and I'm getting the police and an ambulance coming to the location that I'm at because it tracks my GPS. So it's a really nice little tool. It's comfortable and it's just on my key ring and I can move it off of there very easily. It's called Ripple Safety. And I pay $10 for the security on it. And then uh, every 90 days, they send me a new one because the battery in it for five bucks. So it's been a really good tool for me as a real estate agent. So that was part of the, kind of the intro to safety and security. And let's go ahead and move forward from there. Let me ask this question before we do though. Has anybody picked up any information today that they didn't know before today? Anything that you feel like, oh, I didn't know I could do that. That's the whole goal here, is to give you something that you didn't know, number one, number two, that's gonna be useful for you to take away and put to use. So John, talk to us about smart home speakers. Alexa, so any of you have an Alexa? One or two? Okay. How many of you know what an Alexa is? Most of you, yeah, you've seen the commercials. That's what we call a spark speaker. Okay, so now that the slide is cut up, uh, so they're pretty cool, actually. Uh, Ingrid likes to get up and Ask Alexa what the temperature is when she gets up. And it says, Good morning, Ingrid. The temperature is 67 degrees. It's 604. I hope you have a nice day. You can ask Alexa to tell you a joke. They're usually pretty corny, though. You can ask Alexa to make a shopping list. And then while you're walking around the kitchen, say, oh, add ketchup to my shopping list, or add uh, my bread to the shopping list. And, and when I'm ready to go shopping, I can say, print my shopping list, and it finds the printer in my house and sends it to that printer. It can be programmed to call, place calls for you. I can go, Alexa, call Patrick. Assuming it has access to your contact list, it would call whoever we ask it to call. So that's what a smart speaker is. It does so much more. You can tell it to look up something in the encyclopedia. Just to, it has access clearly to the internet. So about any question you ask it, it can answer. Uh, and sometimes I try to play stone on my too. Well, the other thing that's good too, that I, I'm going to just experiment with it a little bit. Of course, you don't want to give too much information away. As we all know, we need to be careful about what we share. But I may say, I'm going to make cheese enchiladas tonight. Give me a recipe for that. And she'll just read it right off to me so that I have that. Could you repeat it? I missed the last two items. She'll read that right off to me. And the other thing, John and I like to cook together. So when we're in the kitchen doing our thing, we want to play some kind of music. We have the ability then to say, uh, Alexa, play tunes for us from the Crosby, Stills, and Nash album. And it will be hearing those songs so that we are able to, you know, do our thing in the kitchen. It's so easy. It's been really nice. There's another item at the very bottom down here that we have marked with a, a red reminder. And it's called have a drop. It, they also have a drop in feature enabled. And what's nice about the drop in feature is if you have a family member that lives somewhere else and you're okay with that, they can actually do a drop in on you and it, you'll see them on your video screen. So my mom lived in Farmington, New Mexico. And we wanted to keep an eye on her because she was all by herself out there. We could actually drop in on her, or she knew we'd be coming, the four of us. And we could check in and say, hey, mom, what are you doing? I saw you in the kitchen this morning. What were you making when you were there? It's just a nice little tool to have when distance is so far or with COVID and not being able to go visit. It's a nice tool. So now we're going to move forward to lighting. And on the lighting section, we're going to actually have Debbie come up the next two slides because she's got some great things that she wants to share with us about lighting. Oh, 
Okay, so we talked about um, smart home features and Alexa, and you can even get these smart light bulbs that work with your Alexa or your Google Nest, uh, Google Home, and um, you can. They have different temperatures. You can change the color, any color on the spectrum. You can change them from cool white to warm white, and you can tell Alexa, turn on my light, turn off my light, change the light temperature. Um, and you can control it from your smartphone, you can control it with your voice, um, or you can just use a light switch if you get it. Um, let's see what else. I want to go back to the back in the evening when you're going to bed. Um, yeah, I have a smart light bulb in the lamp in my living room, and I have it programmed to turn off at 10 p.m. But if I'm going to be up late that night and it turns off, and I can just say, Alexa, turn the living room light on, and she'll turn it back on for me. Smart plugs and smart switches in our house, also. So, if, if you don't have the smart light bulbs, you can use a smart plug, just plugs right into your electrical outlet. And um, you can do the same thing with that Alexa turn on the lamp. Um, we have a, a window air unit in one of our rooms, and if it gets too cold, I can just say, Alexa, turn the air conditioner off. And it turns it off. And it can also uh, you can set a timer on that too, so it comes on at a certain, certain time and goes off at a certain time. And then we have these switches that you have to replace your um, existing light switch, but um, it does the same thing. I have one on my outdoor backyard lights, and when I let the dogs out, I can just say, Alexa, turn on the lights. Um, and we have a lot of lights, so our neighbors think the sun came out. Okay, all right, that's fine. Yeah, I think that's good. I think the lights are important. Uh, we all probably have some kind of thing in our bathroom that comes on or lights the hallway. Um, a few years ago, when my mom was still alive for her birthday, I got four of these lights at Costco. They were probably about this big. And you plug them into a light switch. And what was really nice about that is that when you walk past it, it, it lights up, but it changes all the colors in there until it feels that you're completely gone and settled down again. So, it was really a nice tool, and it doubles as a uh, flashlight when I pull it out of the out of the wall. So lighting is a really important thing for us. Next thing we have here that John's going to talk about. Oh, actually, I want to show you this. This is an easy change to make on your switches. Gosh, it is so nice to have not every plug, but have several plugs in the house, in the living room, one in the kitchen. Uh, in the bedroom, where you can actually plug in your iPhone or your tablet instead of having to go and find the plug that goes with it, you can just plug it right in there to charge it. I've really enjoyed having that. Um, yes, they even make smart thermostats, and they're great for husband and wives because you can control them from your phone. So I could be in one room and changing the temperature and she'll change it back in the other room without even having to get up and go to the thermostat. Isn't that nice? But uh, other than that, you can program them and say, you know, when I'm gone in the day, set the air conditioning at 78 degrees and at 5 o'clock when I get home, bring it down to 74 or whatever the temperature you want. Same with the, um, and like I said, you can remote control them or go up to them and then program them. So that's pretty much what a smart thermostat does. Now, one thing about the smart thermostats that I wanted to add, you know, when, and because John and I are real estate agents, a lot of times on the houses that we're um, helping our sellers sell, if they have, if the seller has an old tiny uh, thermostat, uh, oftentimes when the home inspector does an inspection on the home, that's one of the things that they write up that they want to see that that thermostat, they suggest, they can't demand, they suggest that that thermostat is changed out to a smart home so thermostat. And all of the new builds that are out there now, that's exactly what you're going to see out there. And they're very similar to the models that we have here. How many of you have smart thermostats in your home? Easy, easy to use. Little uh, story with him. He's got certain things that he likes temperature-wise. 
He likes it our, as we change, as we age. I used to always be the cold person, and he our, and he was the warm person. But as time changes, now he's the cold person. I'm the warm person. So a lot of times when, we're, when we go to bed, I wait until he goes to sleep, and then I go in and I set it for the sleep temperature, which makes it cooler at night to sleep. Don't be changing that on me, John. <laughs> I know you do. Okay, so then moving back on again for home security. So again, a lot of different tools that we have here. Ring doorbell. How many of you have a ring doorbell? Just a couple people. Oh my goodness. Well, the ring doorbell serves lots of purposes. It's a security device. Number one, as you're seeing up there in the top right hand corner, you can see people that are coming onto your porch. Do you remember the days when we had to worry so much about somebody coming and stealing a package that you've received off your porch? You knew it was there, you didn't send it over to the, to the neighbor because you didn't want to bother. Well, now you can see those people on your front porch. Currently, Amazon takes pictures to prove they've left them there and they send them to you. But in this case, you could say, hey, you know, what are you taking? Why are you taking those packages off the front porch? Another thing that they do is it's a listening device. So an example that I can share with you is that one of my homeowners had a ring doorbell on her home. And typically the, the uh, suggestion is when you're showing your home, when you've got another agent coming in with a buyer, seller, you should not be here. You want to be off the premises so they can come in and look at your, at your home without feeling like you're watching every move. Well, my seller calls me and she says, oh my gosh, we're getting an offer. And I said, you weren't at the house during the showing, were you? No, no, no. I, I, I did exactly what you said. I stayed away. I said, how would you know we're getting an offer? She said, I could hear it. I saw him standing on the curb. The buyer was talking to the agent saying, let's write an offer. I'm so excited. It's probably coming over to you anytime. Check your email. Well, they were writing an offer, but it wasn't on that house. <laughs> but they saw them talking. They heard them talking. Uh, so there's lots of different devices that you can use out here uh, that have cameras, etc. And, you know, we just encourage you to check those out. They're easy to program today. You don't have to hire a service to come in and do that. Okay, I'll talk about door locks. One thing I want to say about the ring doorbells is the most prominent brand, but there are others. And sometimes police have used those to solve crimes when there's a burglary or something in the neighborhood, they'll go around and say, find people who have a ring or a video doorbell and they'll get access to the video recording from it for the last however many hours. And then they may be able to identify a car or actually somebody had come to the door or something like that. So they're good for security as well. But um, all right, I, I asked this question. How many of you have a smart lock your doors. Any one of these locks in the speaker, anybody have something like that on their phone? Okay, well, let me tell you about them. Basically, they're a combo lock. They have a com some of them have fingerprint readers. I want to try that out because some of those fingerprint readers, uh, you want to shoot it before it uh, lets you in. But uh, you can put combos in them. And like the one we have, we can store multiple combinations. So when we go out of town and our dog slash house sitter comes over, she has her own combo to our door. Uh, and that's one that we can delete if we want to, whatever we want. Uh, same way our son has his own uh, combination for our door. Um, a lot of them you can access with your smartphone and unlock the door. So on your ring doorbell, you see, oh, there's a guy that just came to deliver this package. You can talk to him and say, I'm going to open the door, put my package in the house, close it, and I'll lock it. So housekeeper, all types of things that uh, this technology allows. There have been a number of times for John and I, and we're really excited about this tool, number of times where we've gotten locked out of the house. And our neighbors would say, well, why don't you have one of those keypads on the outside of your garage where you can just key yourself in? Well, that was always a good idea, but we never did it. Uh, having this has been so great because it's easier to get in and out. We don't have to use a key. 
you see that some of those do have a place where you can use a key and others do not. It's just a great tool. It's not a very expensive thing to install, right? Okay, well, moving right along. So now we're gonna to go to something that's a little bit different type of security. Safety for those with dementia. And this, this is really a great tool. You know, there's all kinds of trackers that are out there. There's GPS, that, they all have GPS uh, to monitor the locations of individuals. Um, some can alert the caregiver when the loved one wanders outside of the boundaries that have been set aside. Uh, some you wear, kind of like the I fall, uh, the fall pendant. Others you can uh, program to your phone. Uh, but we found one today that we thought would be really great. Uh, we've never seen this before, and I love this technology. I want to share that with you. Ray has always loved to do is hike. We are so fortunate to live on a beautiful piece of property on Seneca Lake in upstate New York, but that beauty also has its hazards. Surrounding our property is miles of farmland and a state park all within walking distance, making a simple walk out in the backyard stressful, worrisome, and dangerous. I not only worry about him getting lost, but also worry about him getting caught in the very unpredictable weather in New York State. The smart soul, though, has alleviated some of that worry. He may not have thought clearly enough to put on a coat, but I know he has put on his shoes. I simply check the app on my iPhone or head to the computer so that I can monitor his movements to make sure he is not outside the geofence that I have set up. It tells me where he is, where he has been, and where he is going, all in real time. I will now have the peace of mind knowing that should we get separated, I will be able to find him. He'll always be just a click away. That is a great, great tool. Again, remember that Debbie has put together a list for you with all the clickable links, so you'll be able to go out and research and get more information on these things together or, or with your loved one, etc. after the seminar. It'll be out next week, right, Deb? So let's talk about assistive technology. And we're going to go ahead and move forward there. Um, let me see what do we have here. Oh, it is? Okay, hearing impaired. Well, I talked about my hearing situation earlier, so this is a slide that was picked for me. Um, uh, there's some alert systems. So if you really struggle with your hearing and you, take, you don't sleep with your hearing aids on, of course, you want to make sure that you're able to get up for an event or uh, something that you're doing. There are certain things out there like alarm clocks that have a vibrating, you see that round disc? You could set that disc underneath your mattress pad, you could set it underneath your pillow. It would vibrate when the alarm goes off to alert you that it's time to get up. Uh, there are things that you could do with, with your phones. The smoke detectors, again, liken it back to the business that I'm in. There's a form that you have to fill out when you put your home on the market. It's called a seller's disclosure. And you have to identify all the workings of your home. One of the things that's been added to that is do you have a smoke alarm in your home that will help the hearing impaired? And I had a client a few years ago that that was exactly her situation. She really couldn't hear and her, her sense of smell was not so great. But if she was in the kitchen cooking or something happened, that smoke alarm would start flashing lights, making loud noise both in the house and outside the house to alert her that there's trouble and you need to leave the home. So that was a great tool. Um, instead of phone calls, using instant message and text, and I found that a lot of the people that we have uh, come into contact with, they prefer to be able to do texting. 
you know, you always ask, what's the best way to reach you? Do you want me to call you? Do you want to go by email? If I need to come over to see you, what's the best way to do that? And I've found that more and more people are feeling more comfortable with texting. How about anybody here? Okay, so texting is a good thing. And then we have, uh, we've got another uh, system that called Caption Telephone. We actually have somebody here today that uh, can talk more about that. She'll make a quick comment about it. Janita? 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 Come, uh, Janita, hi, sorry. Um, you're with uh, a phone system that's like a Caption Telephone, correct? So you've got some information you put on the table out there for that. I will do. That's great. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Uh, the last one that we have here is video chats. How many of you are doing video chats? It's kind of nice to be able to do that um, when you have the ability to uh, have something typed in. Maybe you can't, you're not able to actually um, speak to somebody, but you can do a video chat and have a phone that will actually display what that person on the other end is saying. Yeah, speaking of video chats, any of you ever done a video conference with your doctor? Yeah, you have. So that's the same thing. You have a computer, and especially last year when nobody was seeing anybody, I actually had a video chat with my doctor one time uh, on our computer. So that's another way technology can be used. But visually impaired. My mom had macular degeneration. And it got so bad that really she, she barely see. But when she still tried to read, it was a challenge for her. Of course, the magnifying glass right down on the print, we bought her this big thing you could stick a book or whatever in to, to read, but she really didn't want to use it. Ingrid's mom was the same way. But now, well, I even use enhanced reading sometimes in fine print. I pull out my phone. Turn on the camera, hold it over the page, and I can magnify it or zoom in on it, and I can read that way. So that's one way uh, you can use technology to uh, assist you. Voice recognition, we talked about Alexa earlier, but there's other uh, voice recognition devices that you can talk to and dictate things to be typed out for you or translated or whatever. I like to add that um, for text messaging, we just talked about that for a moment. So sometimes I have a lot to say and I don't want to have to type it all in text wise. So what I'm doing is I go ahead and enter in to do a text message or an instant message and there's a little microphone on the bottom of the screen that I can tap and then I can just dictate my message to that person and send it that way, which makes it a lot easier to do when you're trying to send a message. That's a good tip, but make sure you proofread before you hit send, because you'd be really surprised with some of the things that show up on the other end. Not on my end. Yeah, well, that's the whole reason I said that, because... <laughs> oh, yeah, see, there's, there's a witness right there. Why did she say that? That's kind of nasty. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's, uh, you can use your phone camera to zoom in on things. I already mentioned that. Electronic books, uh, if you have a tablet or you, uh, Kindle is Amazon's, so you get books and different, you can even get subscriptions to newspapers or whatever, and you can zoom the print as big as you want it. And so that's very good for people who need uh, help in reading things. And then finally, I just mentioned the emails. Uh, and we mentioned the smart home speakers earlier that you can dictate to for text and things. 
One of the other things I wanted to add about the ebook, though, uh, here again, if you're challenged with your vision, whether it be you just don't have the right lens in your glasses, you can download that ebook that you've been wanting and you can set that, whether it be on your Kindle or your iBook device, tablet device, where it can actually, it'll actually read it to you. So uh, John and I both have, uh, we do our devotionals in the morning and we like to do that through our Bible app. And it's really nice sometimes just to be able to change that and have it read back to you. And that's an easy thing. It's nothing you have to add on. It comes right with that application. Sure. Um, one of the things we had listed was accessibility options on your computer. Um, all computers and all phones have a section in your settings where you can set accessibility options. It lets you enlarge the text, make it bigger. You can have it change your background from a, a white to a black with high contrast letters so you can see it. My mom is visually impaired, so she has a very large computer monitor. And we've set hers that way where she has the big text and the black background with yellow text, and she can see that a lot better. Um, and so she does, she can't text on her cell phone, but she can text to me from her computer, um, and she can still read uh, the news and that kind of things on the computers. Okay, moving on now to uh, social interacting. Again, we get back to social. So there's a lot of different things that are here that a lot of us are familiar with. We've got, uh, we've, oops, we've got social media, we have uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, a lot of different things that we can do out there that most of us are enjoying or learning to, whether it be we've learned it ourselves or we've learned it through our grandkids or our kids are showing us how to do that. How many of you have a Facebook account? I'll tell you, it's for a lot of people it's been a great way to connect especially if you're living away from those people you went to school with or to college with it's nice to have that being able to share those pictures with one another and then there's some other things out there uh video chats so my granddaughter my princess erin uh, she has acquired an, a used iphone she's nine at first i thought oh my gosh that's so young she didn't need a phone she can't call on it, but she can send me videos. She can instant message me through iMessage using the camera. Hi, Grandma. What are you doing today? Or she can send me a picture of something or tell me about a book that she read that afternoon in school. Oh, my goodness, it means so much. Because even though they live in Dallas, we think we'd see them a lot. We really don't but we get to communicate back and forth with them through the uh, iMessage, which has been a really great thing, or learn about things that she's doing in school. Or uh, for a lot of people, just being able to do a Zoom and be able to get on and participate like we're doing today, doing that, that's a social thing. And like Zoe had mentioned earlier, a Celebration Magazine really amplifies is they've got uh, classes that they do, they've got, uh, uh, happy hours that they do together, bingo. They've got a whole bunch of things that they do together. So it's a fun thing to do. In the bottom right hand corner of this slide that's up here, I want to show you another little video. We can make sure we've got good sound. Um, I just recently have a, a new client and she mentioned to me, she has a smart TV. Jim, this is for you. She has a smart TV. And she told me that she loves reading books to her grandchildren. I said, hey, where do they live? She said, they live in Tennessee. I said, oh, how often do you get to read to them? She says, I read to them twice a week. She has a stack of books that they have the matching stack of books. One is three and the other one is six. And what she does is she uses the Facebook portal Again, comes with Facebook. She uses the Facebook portal, and she can sit in front of her big TV, and they'll be looking at the book and turning the pages just like she's doing, but Grandma's reading the story. I thought that was really touching and a nice thing to be able to do. 
We waited so long to become grandparents. Look at that princess. You know, when I finally did, I yearned for them to be closer. I just wanted my grandchildren to know me. To get those piggies. To have all of my children and my grandchildren in one place at one time is just the greatest feeling. My goodness. I love this week. It's the greatest feeling. If you can't be there, feel there. You know, I think that just that, you know, for years we've had things, we've had pictures of our grandkids that were the picture of when they were five years old, but they're 15 now on the, re on the refrigerator, for example. It's so easy for you to keep up with them and see what's going on. So that was Facebook portal, and there's a lot of other tools like that out there, but it's something worthwhile investigating. So let's move to lifelong learning. Uh, a Mayo Clinic study showed that people who participate and continue learning as they age, it helps stimulate the brain and you have a healthier brain. You know, skipping back to social interaction, that's one of the other things that you can do. A lot of times as we age and we tend to not participate, and some people become hermits, that is not healthy for you, for your brain. So that engagement through social interaction is good. And then if you add, how can I keep learning, whether it be reading, or there's so many ways that we can do it with the internet now. Yeah, there we go. We, we, anybody ever heard of TED Talks? Oh yeah, a few of you have. Uh, you can find those out on the internet. And so they have all these interesting people doing a talk, maybe about technology or just something going on in the world. Yeah, it's very fascinating in all, all types of subjects and all different speakers on those. Uh, we mentioned YouTube, that is that is an incredible resource. I was telling, I, I have about 50 different kinds of flutes from the world and, and I like to play different kinds. And I have one from Japan called the shakuhachi, and I can't play it yet. So the other day I was kind of going, I'd like to learn how to play this. So I went to YouTube and entered in shakuhachi lessons. And there was about 20 videos there, anywhere from four minutes to over an hour. And so I watched a couple of them, and I'm just starting to get the hang of that, that particular clip. So those are things that you can do. And I was stimulating my brain at the time, right? I was learning something new. So those are some of the great things that technology affords for us is that exercise. You know, especially last year in the pandemic when we're at home, you can still get on your TV and watch exercise so you can keep fit. You're doing some celebrations? Yes, yeah, celebration. Silver sneakers. Silver sneakers. Yeah, there's all types of resources out there. Brain games. Debbie and I have a favorite one called Wordscapes that we do. Yeah, actually that's it right there where they give you a, a set of letters and you see how many words you can make out that can fill in the blocks. But uh, puzzles, games, those are all things that stimulate the bigger computer up here and uh, help you to age in a more healthy manner. I think the other thing too, so uh, we go, John and I go three days a week to water aerobics at the Y. That's another way to keep your brain alive, to keep your brain stimulated. So playing games, reading books, exercise is another great way to keep your brain alive. And there's so many of those things that you can do now. Um, we'll make sure in the uh, document that Debbie sends out to you next week that you'll also see how you can log on online to the Celebration Magazine because there, if you're not able to get out to the store or you forgot where they said those magazines are going to be, you can actually get the live version. And what I love about it is when you're looking at it, you can actually feel like you're turning the pages when you're looking through it. It's really a nice publication. Very proud to be a part of that with you. So here's the other thing, too, for a lot of us, that and, and it happens. I think a lot of us raised our hands at the very beginning today. 
we feel this way. We don't want to say anything to people about it. We know there's a lot of things that you can do out there. For some people, it's just frustrating. Physical challenges, maybe you have arthritis in your hands. It's hard to sit down and play a game on your phone or text somebody or type something, or maybe you just don't know how to type. And the finger punching is just not your thing that you do. Or here's the other one, frustration, lack of confidence. I remember early in my career, before I became a real estate agent, I had a consulting company and early on, I would teach people how to use computers. And it was so frustrating for so many people because they wanted to do it right, but it doesn't feel right when they say, no, not that right, your other right, use your other right hand. Uh, no, you can't go there, you've got to press this button instead. It can be really confusing. Uh, we talked about the broadband internet. So a lot of people say, what's that? What's broadband? What does that mean? Just think of it this way. It's high speed internet. That's what it is. High speed internet. And if you don't have internet at home, the library has internet. If you have a cell phone, your cell phone provider has limited internet as well. So you still have that if you want to give that a shot. But you always want to be careful and pay attention to who are you sharing your information with. Rarely, rarely, unless I know that person, am I going to send a payment for anything over my cell phone. So you just want to be really careful there. So here is a picture of some of the resources. Again, don't worry about that. You're going to have them all next week. But the purpose here is to show you that they're all going to have clickable addresses. I know that that in itself sometimes can be frustrating, especially when it's a long, long address to get somewhere. So you'll be able to click on all those things. And if you find websites that you really like, that, like the Cyber Seniors, the one that we've been playing the little videos from today, or ARP has a really great website as well, you can make a bookmark and save that location. That way you don't have to worry about where's that email they sent me. So just keep that in mind as well. Uh, Debbie, you were going to talk to us about emergency broadband. What is that? Um, for people who have financial barriers to getting uh, broadband access, there's a, a program right now called the Emergency Broadband Benefit. And when I send out your handout, it will have a link that tells you more about that. There are some um, qualifications you have to meet, mainly financial. Um, but if that's a barrier for you or somebody you know, then I'll have that information for you so you can check that out. So we have one last video. Have you ever heard of YouTube? Yes, I've heard of it, but I have no clue as to what it means. Ah, well, look, there it is. Press it. An internet website where there's videos. You can watch any. No. Yes, it's wonderful. So what what, what was the song that you wanted to hear? The, do you know the Alleluia Chorus? No. Young lady, <laughs> you are uneducated musically. <laughs> now, let's see how, how oh. This is the search bar. This is where you write in what you're looking for. It's from things more commonly of their pets, their friends, TV shows, to music. Everything is here. Hallelujah. 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 that I really got excited about this website as we were doing some research on what can we give you today. Uh, there are, uh, UTA offers classes where there are students that would come and work with you on putting some of these programs on your computer or on your phone, learning how to use it. 
This particular website, Cyber Seniors, they have, they're all over the country, but they have students that have volunteered their time and they'll help you do things like, how do I make a backup? How do I move things into the iCloud? How do I transfer things from one program to the next? And you just sign up for it and then you'll get someone like the individuals like you see here and they will do that with you, uh, whether it be through a Zoom or over the phone or however you're comfortable configuring that. But I thought that was a great thing because for a lot of people, they say, well, no, I really don't know how to do it. I don't want to bother my kids. They're busy and my grandkids. They, they get all this stuff on there and they get it all mixed up. Does that sound like any of us? It does. So that's another place that you can go and have a look and see what's out there so that you'll get a little bit more engaged because it is empowering. That's what I want to say about it. So it's empowering to be able to do that and feel like you're, you have a little more control if you want to. So do we have any questions today from our audience? How do you get a hold of the UTA people? Debbie, do we have that? TCC, that's what I meant, TCC. So we'll be on the handout that comes to you next week. Who else? Did you learn some good stuff today? Do you feel like it was worth your, worth your while to make the drive up here? I know for some of you, you come from a distance to come. So I want to hear just a couple things from our audience. What will you implement? Somebody share, what are you going to implement? that you learned today? My bad. The accessibility options, that's great. That's good to hear. Yes. Keypad on the garage, yes. That's really great. Or just that special lock. Yes. Then you don't need to worry about that because then you can go in the front door and go to the garage. John and I, um, I, I have to tell you this, John and I have a little story. I have a story to share. So our son, when he was still living at home, New Year's Eve, he went to, you know, be with his friends New Year's Eve. So we're at home by ourselves, we've got our robes on, got a little bit of champagne, we thought, let's just go ahead and go outside, sit outside, it's nice. We're bringing the new year together. So I'm walking out the door in the backyard, pitch dark out there, walking out the door. And as I'm closing the door, John says, did you get the phone in case Patrick wants to call us and wish us Happy New Year? No, let me go get it real quick. We are locked out in the backyard in our robes, in our robes, and we can't get in. Now, the first thing that came to my mind, we've got this guy that lives next door to us, George. George's got every tool in the world. George is going to help us. So I said to John, I'm going to go upstairs. I'm going to go get George. And he said, you're not going over there like that. And I said, we need to do something. So now we're hunting around the backyard trying to find a rock that we can use to break a window. What window are we going to break that won't be a big deal to replace? Well, we did find one. We went to the son's bedroom, you know, let's use the window, the, the rock here broke the window. Of course, there were shards of glass. He's thinking he's going to climb through that window to go to the front to the back door and let us in. And I said, no, you can't do that. While he's trying to look it over, I hate to tell you this, but I did go over to George. Went, knocked on the door. He came to the door and looked at me and he said, oh, wow, where's John? I said, well, that's why I need you. Can you come over? So he came over, of course, got right in, took care of everything. He said, I don't understand you two. Why don't you get one of those keypads on your garage door? Well, that was the first introduction to that to us. The next morning, we're headed out to church, and they're in their front yard, just kind of smiling at us. I said, well, you guys probably didn't realize that you moved in next door to Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> but we do have that door locked now. Sorry about that. Do we have any other questions? All right, well, let's go ahead and start with our drawing. 